hasn't been a market crash, but Zillow, oh my gosh, what are they doing? Let's talk about that right after this. <laughs> and Shepherd Realtors and today we're going to talk about October 2021 numbers as well as a little bit of what's happening currently in the market. So last month we sold 2,218 units. That was up 3% from September. Our lowest price property was $10,000. It was a three bedroom, two bath on a corner in East Hamilton, 1,568 square feet. So good size home. All I know is that it was sold before scent. And if you ever see that in the marketing remarks and you're like, well, what does that mean? It basically means that there was a deal that was made before it was ever put on the MLS for everyone to see. And I know that upsets people sometimes, but you know, sometimes if there's someone in your office or you're doing a deal with, with somebody and they're like, oh, hey, I have this property coming on the market. And it is what it is. And that person goes, hey, that's exactly what I've been looking for for myself or these clients or whatever it is. Sometimes it just works out. It's right for everyone and a deal is made prior to it getting listed. So we understand that it upsets people sometimes, but if it were you, you may think differently. Our highest priced property was this just amazing kind of Spanish, Italian, old world looking home that was built in 1925. So exquisite, it, it was just gorgeous but it was in Hyde Park on 2.96 acres, five bedrooms, five and a half bathrooms, 8,374 square feet, but it, it looked out onto the river. <laughs> it, it literally looked like it belonged in Italy. Um, stone with brick, clay tile roof, big, just old world, you know, wood and things inside, but with all the convenience of today. So even though it was built in 1925, it had been updated and it was beautiful, definitely. This home started at 4.25, was on the market for 134 days and ultimately sold at 3.65. Gorgeous. So. Hope people are enjoying that. Our average sale this past month, it did go down a little bit more. Um, it went down 2% to 288,914. Our days on market increased just two days. So we're at 13 days on market on average. At the beginning of the month, we had 1,723 units available for sale. Currently, um, November 18th, which is today, we have 1,640 units for sale. So we're back down to about three months of, or I'm sorry, three weeks of inventory um, because we're still just selling through what's there. And because we're getting into the holidays, not as much is coming on the market. It's typical, it happens every year uh, because when you go back to 2020, we sold almost the same number of units. Um, and we had, we had just a couple more things available, but not a lot. And we've sold a ton of homes this year too. So hoping there's still more people that wanna move. But Zillow, I promised you I would talk about it. And there are so many, <laughs> so many crazy stories out there. I saw an interview with Barbara Corcoran from Shark Tank, who, you know, is a real estate mogul. She knows, typically, I thought she knew what she was talking about, but I, she had no idea what was going on on the ground. Now, maybe the CEO believes that 
they just couldn't find enough people to actually come and upgrade homes and get them ready for market. And, and that was their big downfall. But for those of you who have been out shopping for homes, we all know the truth. Zillow, unfortunately, overpaid for homes. They paid over market value for things that were not in good shape. And they marketed to those people saying, you don't have to do anything. Don't worry about painting. You don't have to worry about fixing that thing in your house that's, that's awful, like changing the carpet or something's broken. Just don't worry about it, just, just leave. Just get out of your house, we'll take it, we'll pay you way more than anyone else will, and we're gonna take lower fees. So I was a business major. I ran a business. I could not, for the life of me, understand their business model. It really made no sense. And the only thing I could come up with was, all right, well, maybe they're trying to dip their toe in, they're trying to get some market share, and they think to do that, they have to overpay a little bit. Well, they were doing that everywhere, in all the states, is my understanding. And unfortunately, that just can only go on for so long, because now you walk into a home that is owned by Zillow, and you go, wow, okay, I mean, it's not bad it seems still a little high for the neighborhood and the last few i've been in actually weren't too bad they had been cleaned which is something we didn't see over the summer and they've been you know maybe painted some of them have new carpet uh, but the last few i've looked at have actually looked better than the ones we saw early on um but <laughs> you're looking at the price and it's like okay, it's still overpriced for the neighborhood and for the condition. And then you go back and you look and see what they paid for it. They've already dropped the price $20,000 below what they paid for it. I'm not talking about what they had it listed at originally, which was well above where they are now, but none of this makes sense sense and for those of you who are in business or you just understand how math works you're gonna say the same thing it, now is it gonna make the market crash no we still have buyers and we still have plenty of buyers who walk into these houses and just throw up their hands like what the heck i don't get it my point those houses, many of them are still sitting. Now, <laughs> they, they did get one recently um, that I'm aware of because Jason was writing an offer on it and he was told they had five offers. It was overpriced, but it was like, it was close. Like it was within five to $7,000 of actual market value. So at that point, people are a little more willing to step out and make an offer. <laughs> but, but again, for normal people, you can't list your house that way because, I mean, these things just sit there and sit there and sit there and people forget about them. And then when the price finally starts to come down, People, people will go and they will buy it, but they're not going to buy it when they feel like they don't, like they're not, it's not even close. Like I'm not gonna pay the price you're asking and you're not going to accept my offer that's 30 to $40,000 less. So I'm just gonna wait. I'll look for something else. Because I think in most cases, it's not that people aren't willing to negotiate, but when it seems futile, it's it's a waste of time. And, and I think that's, you know, where all of us just kind of say, eh, all right, if it comes down, we'll come back to it if we haven't found anything else. And so hopefully those of you who are looking at selling, take this as, you know, like when we tell you 
price your home the same or within a few thousand dollars of what the neighbor sold for, we're not joking. Like everyone looks at all of those comps that are around your house and they are judging you against the, the other ones that sold. So, you know, it's, it's just, it's a cautionary tale. Don't overprice. <laughs> And if you're trying to get into the flipping business, don't overpay for things just because you want to be in that business. That, uh, <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> Seriously, it's like I'm taking crazy pills. That's what I've been thinking since this whole thing started. But again, no crashes, just stuff that's sitting on the market it doesn't change the fact that buyers want to buy. They just want to buy something that's reasonably priced and in good condition. All right, so what questions do you guys have? I'm sure that you have heard lots of things and you're also wondering, hey, if the average sale is going down, should I get into the market? Go back and check out this video where I talk about how our market typically goes, how everything kind of runs here in Ohio. <laughs> so thanks for joining me today. And please like, subscribe, and share this video with someone else who might be looking for a home here in Cincinnati. And please reach out if you have questions or even comment below. All right, we'll see you guys next month.